talking about anxiety, mood, and eating disorders. And these three areas of disorders have a lot in common. For instance, they involve internalizing, taking our frustration and our stress and really taking it in and hurting ourselves. The next unit we're gonna talk about is the conduct disorders, which are definitely externalizing. This is when we take our frustrations and we take them out into the world and hurt others. So what we're gonna classify under the conduct disorders is a bit of a hodgepodge of things. The DSM doesn't completely classify them this way. And there'd be one that you think is maybe missing, but we'll get back to it uh, in a different subsection of this unit. And so for our purposes, conduct disorder is really persistent and dramatic anger. And so it's the anger towards other people or other things. And we just feel like we're so frustrated and it's other people's faults. It also involves a lot of low impulse control. And uh, some of the outcomes of having a conduct disorder involves more strained negative relationships. And when we think about our criteria for a disorder, deviance, maladaptivity, and distress, what's really important here is a lot of times the person with the conduct disorder may not ex acknowledge their distress, but the people around them may acknowledge that distress. And so that still qualifies as a disorder if they're causing distress in the relationships. And so they could be observed as dangers to themselves or dangers to other people. And some of these may be predictors of who's going to become criminals or have disciplinary consequences associated with these behaviors. A lot of these conduct disorders do have a lot of biological components and they may run in families, but they can also be more personality or situationally based, especially the first one we're gonna talk about, and that is oppositional defiant disorder. So oppositional defiant disorder is a childhood disorder. You have to be a child to be diagnosed with ODD. Um, once you're a teenager or an adult, you wouldn't be considered to have ODD, it would be something else. And the oppositional defiant disorder is when you are defiant and you oppose authority. So that's why it's called that. And so this is the idea that although we think of toddlers as having tantrums and kids as being a bit defiant from time to time, ODD is when a child younger than five years is very defiant and explosive almost every day. And a child over five years is definitely explosive at least once a week. So this is when a child loses their temper and becomes easily annoyed. They argue with authority figures, whether that's their parents or their teachers or anybody else that's trying to guide them. They deliberately will annoy and harass. So it's not just a reactive thing. They will actually seek out and attempt to make people have a bad day and they will become very spiteful and vindictive towards their authority figures. So this is the idea that a child in school might just have a grudge against their teacher and they go to school planning to disrupt things. It's the idea that they're not just losing control of themselves and having an age appropriate tantrum. They're planning to become a problem for that teacher. They're planning to irritate their step parent. They're planning to get back at the parents that are trying to guide them and provide authority for them. And so as you can imagine, having ODD definitely interrupts one's learning, definitely interrupts one's relationships. It strains the family child dynamic, it strains the school dynamic, and it can cause a lot of problems. If a parent is trying to parent a child with ODD, they can become very frustrated, very overwhelmed. They may be scared of their child, for instance. And so this is going to be something we need to contact as a child psychologist about and try and get some attention to. And as we move into adolescence, ODD can often shift into a second diagnosis, which is called conduct disorder. So this is when we more diagnose in adolescence. Uh, and so this is the idea that now instead of just opposing authority, we might be picking on people that are under us in the social ladder as well. We might begin to bully, threaten, and intimidate people just indiscretionately, people that are older than us, people that are younger than us, people that are the same age as us. And so this is a child or a teen who initiates physical fights. It's not just about being vindictive and spiteful and being annoying. Now they're actually trying to hurt others. So they might have physical fights, they might pick on someone, they might become cruel to people and animals. So this is a child who might do things to animals that's very cruel or they might kill animals in a very especially cruel way. And so they're deliberately trying to cause harm to others. And they seem to enjoy seeking out and causing this cruelty to others. They may also deliberately destroy property. They might use explosives or baseball bats to destroy things uh, just to bug people. 
And so we can see this onset in childhood. We can also see this onset in adolescence. And once we're in adolescence, we tend to use this diagnosis rather than the oppositional defiant diagnosis. And this is a much more extreme disorder. It's going to have a lot more chaos and a lot more harm associated with it. That's why it's important to diagnose ODD as soon as we can to try and get that child on a different trajectory before it exacerbates into conduct disorder. Now, along with these two disorders, you might be thinking, what about antisocial personality? And we're going to cover that. That's kind of the next step up where some people with conduct disorder might go on to have any social personality disorder, uh, but we'll talk about that in a different classification. What we're also going to talk about in this conduct disorder section, though, is the manias. This is when a person gets intense pleasure and gratification from something that's socially unacceptable. It could be something that's very dangerous and harmful. And so this is the idea that we might all enjoy watching a campfire or seeing the mystical sparks of candlelight dinners, but a pyromania is associated with someone who doesn't just enjoy fire. They enjoy when fire destroys. Specifically, when fire destroys things they have no right destroying. So when they cause arson to other people's property, let's say, or they just get really careless with the campfire and they start burning things that you really shouldn't be putting in the campfire. Another big thing here is it cannot be as motivated by money. So this is not an arsonist who's just in it for the insurance benefits. It's not someone who's trying to get a payday. Pyromania has to be someone who likes to burn things because watching it burn and watching it destroy gives them intense gratification. And so this would be a giant explosion that they're very pleased to see as a destructive force, let's say. This is not the same as perhaps a budding chemist, a child who likes controlled scientific experiments in the chemistry lab where it enjoys some fire. That's not pyromania. Pyromania is someone who does this in a very um, maladaptive way that could cause harm to other people's property and is considered socially unacceptable. That's, that's a key phrase here. Another type of mania is kleptomania. And this is an idea that someone's not stealing for money. They're not robbing bread so they can eat. It's the idea that they are stealing just for the pure thrill of it. So this is not necessarily organized crime or mafia. That tends to be more business-like. This is the person who will go and just shoplift for the rush of shoplifting. This is a person who sometimes can't control themselves. They just all of a sudden get so impulsive with stealing. It's, it's different than someone who's stealing to fulfill a drug habit, let's say. They're stealing for a means, versus kleptomania is someone who is just getting such a rush and such a joy in the stealing in and of itself. So these are really when there's that really intense gratification from these socially unacceptable means.